replicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888 253 3139. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on healthcare? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet, the highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease? It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the new world order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Coast to coast. Direct from Austin, you're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. He aligns himself with the truth, and it's time for you to choose a side. You're listening to Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I apologize to the callers who are on hold. Our phone system went down. I... We're in the process of talking to Dennis from Oregon. I really wanted to hear the story about the Battle of Athens in 1946 from Stephen, Tennessee, but um, our phone system is still down. So we're going to finish up with some news here. Now, of course, CNN's Piers Morgan signed off. We're so sad to see him go. We don't know where he's going to go because I think if he goes back to the UK, I think he's wanted back there uh, because of a phone hacking scandal. But he would fit in really well if he just wants to stay here in the U.S. because, you know, apparently phone hacking isn't a problem. If you get involved in phone hacking, uh, you can be part of the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee like Mike Rogers, or you can resign and then become uh, somebody on talk radio, which is apparently what uh, Mike Rogers is going to do. He's going to have a talk radio show. But uh, let's talk about Piers Morgan first. This is, uh, he had some interesting comments. So he, for 55 minutes, he talked about the missing airplane that they didn't have any new news about. And then he had another five minutes where he took a parting shot at gun owners again. He said that uh, guns belong on a military battlefield. Really? Well, you know, tell that to Yeland uh, Ye, the guy in, in uh, California, the state senator who was trying to grab as many guns as he could, but also turning around and selling them as well as rocket launchers to the FBI in a sting operation. This is what we're concerned about. This is why you don't want to give the government a monopoly of power on guns, especially because look at what Homeland Security is doing. Homeland Security is actually trying to turn our city streets into a battlefield. And of course, under the NDAA, people like John McCain and Lindsey Graham and Barack Obama are saying that we all live on a battlefield, that it's a worldwide battlefield. And that on that battlefield, as part of the NDAA, you don't get due process. The military can pick you up and hold you indefinitely. They can transport you somewhere else for torture if they wish, or I guess they could just torture you where you are. And they don't have to be held accountable because under the NDAA, they assume that the entire world is a battlefield. So, Piers, when you say that guns belong in a military battlefield, tell that to your buddies at Homeland Security. And then he had an interesting quote. He quoted 
Sir Winston Churchill. He said, if you have an important point to make, don't try to be subtle or clever. Use a pile driver. Hit the point once, then come back and hit it again, then hit it a third time, a tremendous whack. Well, you know, I don't think that Piers Morgan did that very well. You know who did that really well? Alex Jones. Alex Jones had an important point to make, and he wasn't trying to be subtle about it either. He was passionate. People needed to see that we're passionate about losing our freedoms. It isn't just an intellectual discussion. It's gotten to the point where people need to get angry about their freedoms being taken. I remember just a couple of weeks ago at CPAC, Ted Cruz got up and he made some, some jokes about, turn on your cell phones, I want Obama to hear every word of this, next thing I'm going to say, and the people laughed. Now, it was kind of a joke, and I understand, I don't want to be accused of being humorless, but we've got to get to the point where it's no longer funny, where somebody says something like that, and the reaction is not that we laugh about it, but maybe we hiss about it, or we boo about it. We should be angry that they're doing these things to us illegally. Finally, he says, this is Piers Morgan talking. He says, I've made my point. I've given it a tremendous whack, and now it's down to you. It's your country. These are your gun laws, and the senseless slaughter will only end when enough Americans stand together and say enough. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of senselessness that's going on about guns, and we were just talking earlier in the show about a guy who, under D.C. laws, Washington, D.C. laws, he was just... Uh, convicted of having of trying to acquire ammunition because of course what he had wasn't even ammunition he didn't have guns he didn't have ammunition he had a a misfired shotgun shell and some metal bullets that didn't have any powder or projectile possibility with it for muzzle loading purposes no guns not even a muzzle loader and yet they persecuted him over that this is in a city that doesn't want to obey the Constitution, ignores the Second Amendment, and then when their Supreme Court, which they'd like to pretend is a, uh, the arbiter of a living document, they think the Constitution doesn't mean what it says it means, but it means whatever the Supreme Court says, unless the Supreme Court says it means something they don't like. And in D.C., when the Supreme Court struck down their laws, they just continued doing this, continued to do these senseless persecutions. That's what's going on, Piers. I know you don't understand it, but we do. And so long, farewell. We're not really sad to see you go. Now, somebody else who's leaving, of course, is, is Mike Rogers. And we're going to be very glad to see him get out of Congress. But, of course, he's going to continue to spew his police state, surveillance state, war state rhetoric on the radio. It turns out he's going to have a talk show. Now, as he's leaving, he did a couple of things this last week. The House Intelligence Committee started to assume ownership over oversight and reform of the NSA. They're trying to reform the FISA Act, and the Judiciary Committee has been the one that's been taking the lead on this because they're concerned about civil liberties and they're concerned about the law. But now the House Intelligence Committee, which has really been a cheerleader organization for the NSA, took control of things and tried to come up with their own quote-unquote reform bill. Now, understand that FISA was a result of the church committee hearings that saw tremendous abuses from the CIA. And they created the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act to try to limit what the NSA was doing, limit what the CIA is doing. And of course, they have escaped the bonds of that, just like they've escaped the bonds of the Constitution. And they've used it to create something called the FISA court that meets in secret, one judge, no jury, no lawyer arguing the other side, they make their determinations of this secret court in secret, and they pretend that they're modifying the Constitution with these secret decisions that we're not even allowed to see. So some people are trying to reform that whole process. But then, of course, you got Mike Rogers and Dutch Ruppersberger, a Democrat from Maryland, who put forward a proposal called End Bulk Collection Act which, of course, doesn't end bulk collection. You can always count on the Congress to come up with a law that does just the opposite. It doesn't end bulk collection. What it does is it switches the collection of bulk metadata from the NSA to the phone companies. So that's a really smart move because that allows them to not take the criticism. They can say, well, we're not holding it, just the phone companies are, and they can always go back and pick that up at any time they wish. And, of course, we know that they've been doing that for quite some time. This is an article that came out on, 
RT this weekend, or actually it's about, it was on the 20th is when it was published. Top lawyer for the National Security Agency told a Civil Liberties Oversight Board that the U.S. technology companies were fully aware of the surveillance agency's data collection. Knowledge which the firms have vigorously denied having. They've been saying all along that they were not really collecting the information, even though we saw these leaks from Snowden about the PRISM program. Oh, they didn't participate in that at all. Well, the NSA General Counsel said, no, actually, they did. They had knowledge of all communication information and metadata collected by the agency. And he said uh, they were collecting it in every aspect. And of course, one of the first people to do that was Microsoft. They joined the program back in 2007. Syrian hackers are now claiming to reveal that they know even how much the FBI pays Microsoft for the customer data. So it's not 30 pieces of silver anymore. The Syrian Electronic Army says that in December 2012, they found a document that Microsoft emailed. It was a PDF invoice for $145,100 broken down into $100 per request for information. And then in August 2013, Microsoft allegedly emailed a similar invoice, this time for $352 uh, $352,000 at a rate of $200 per request. Okay, so they're invoicing the NSA for the information that they say they had no idea the NSA was collecting. And of course, then Microsoft is still in the news, promising not to invade customer accounts again. Instead, they're going to have the government do it. You see how they keep switching it back and forth? Mike Rogers says, well, we're not keeping the data the company, the telephone companies are keeping the data. And then Microsoft says, well, we're not going to uh, spy on you. The uh, governments are going to spy on you. So they keep pointing at the other person. And yet it's kind of like, you know, you can't really tell where the head of the snake begins and where the tail ends. Because when it comes to these large companies like Microsoft and the government, they really, there really isn't much difference. One begins and the other one stops and they just kind of keep rotating back and forth. This article says from RT, after reports last week that Microsoft had infiltrated a Hotmail client's content in search of allegedly stolen company source code, the tech giant now claims that it will notify proper legal authorities in the future to avoid violating privacy protection. Yeah, you know, but um, it's, it's more politically expedient to uh, have them do that. If you think that metadata is not important... You need to look at this article that's up on InfoWars about how the NSA can use your metadata to predict your personality. It's actually more invasive than just listening to your phone conversation. They can learn a lot more about you from your metadata. Well, that's it for today's program. We'll be back tomorrow at 11 Central, 12 Eastern. We'll be catch us then. Thanks. Bye-bye. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others,